All right, so now that we've done linear and angular kinematics, let's look at linear and angular kinematic relationships. And it basically is the fact that the linear kinematics at the end of a lever, so at the end of your arm, your leg, tennis racket, golf club, vary with the length of that lever or that radius. So I want you guys to all close your eyes and, and kind of feel this relationship. So here's a merry-go-round. So when somebody spins you on the merry-go-round, how does it feel when you're close to the pole in the center? And how does that change as you go further from the center of rotation out to the seats or even hanging off that merry-go-round? Hopefully you re remember when, from when you were a kid that that linear motion, the speed, um, feels greater further away from that radius that you are. So the angular motion is the spinning of the merry-go-round. The linear motion is what your, your body feels as you increase that radius. And this concept has been used for rides in um, amusement parks. So here's one way to do it instead of they had to get creative, right? So you can't just keep increasing your radius larger and larger and larger. That creates some um, issues space-wise and moment of inertia-wise. But So the scrambler um, took this relationship as, you know, you have a center of rotation in the middle, um, and then these mini center of rotation. So every once in a while, your, ra your radius increases to a max, and you kind of feel that rush of speed on certain parts of that, of that um, e event or merry-go-round. So equation-wise, this relationship between the radius and the linear kinematics and the angular kinematics is true for distance. So the linear distance is equal to the radius times um, theta, which is the angular distance. Okay, it, it is valid for velocity. Linear velocity in V is equal to the radius times um, omega, which is the angular velocity. And it also um, is true for acceleration. So a linear acceleration is equal to the radius times alpha or angular acceleration. All right, and two ways to, to prove this point, and although you did it in your lab as well. Um, so you take a bat, so hopefully you can see the outline of this baseball bat, and there's a point A1, A2, A3, and A4 along this bat, and you swing this bat through a certain angle, and then there's a point B1, B2, B3, B4 on this bat after you swing it. So what we've shown here is that from, so say for this 30 degrees of swinging the bat, here's the distance between A1 and, A2 and B1. So if you were a little bug or standing on this bat, this is the, the linear distance or curvilinear distance that you would have traveled. This is the distance if you were standing on A2, so A2 to B2. This is the distance if you were standing A3 to B3. And this is the distance you would travel if you were standing at near the end of the bat. Or as the radius increases, you travel a greater linear distance. And so um, the change in time is the same for all of these distances. And if you, whoop, if you travel a longer time, a longer distance in the same amount of time, you are going faster. So you are, were traveling faster if you stood an A4 and traveled to B4 than if you stood A1 and traveled to B1.